back in 2012, when many people thought the world was going to end, instead, Ubisoft rocked the world with its third installment in the Far Cry series. The game was unlike anything else on the market at the time, and captured our interest with its vast open world, platforming puzzles, and weapon customization. The game's psychotic antagonist, Voss, single-handedly stole the show and quite literally sent our hero running for their life into the unknown jungle. I would go so far to say that to many, Far Cry 3 is the best game in its long-running series. But maybe we'll save that for an episode because that's not entirely why we're here today. Instead, I want to talk about the overshadowed younger sibling. The DLC that quite literally was a game all by itself. What is going on guys? This is Lost Eddie here, and today we're going to be taking a look back at Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. What exactly is Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon? Well, to say it's a 1980s cocaine-fueled fever dream is just the tip of the iceberg. You see, it's a standalone expansion for the game's third entry, where you play as a totally non-copyright infringing RoboCop-inspired cybernetic super soldier named Sergeant Rex Power Colt. And like any cliche, you're tasked with investigating a rogue sergeant uh, or rather Colonel Sloan. And that's when everything just goes sideways. You see, your partner Spider is KIA, and now it's your job to avenge his death and stop the world from falling into a post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland. Oh, and uh, if you couldn't tell by now, the game hardly takes anything too seriously. So nuclear dinosaurs that shoot lasers out of their eyeballs yeah, those are called Blood Dragons. Now, similarly to most entries in the Far Cry series, you still get to liberate outposts or bases, whatever you want to call them, and complete missions to unlock new fancy attachments for your weapons. Now, this will expand your map and make those pesky story missions a little bit easier. But with that said, let's get back to the story. So you wake up and you're actually rescued by a Dr. Elizabeth Darling. She's like a scientist that was on Sloan's side, but when he went on his, you know, mad rampage, take over the world, turn everything into nuclear wasteland, yeah, she checked out on that one. So now she is willing to betray him and needs your help to take him down. What the hell was that? I'm sending you coordinates to a safe location. And why should I trust you? Because I hate Sloan. This is when Dr. Darling brings us up to speed on exactly what Sloan was planning. Sergeant, slow down, please. We were using the rockets to test biochemical payloads of the dragon's blood. Rockets? As in more red spears? How many? I don't know. A lot. I don't think Sloan is interested in tests anymore. And I don't even want to get into what it does to normal people. That's why you went AWOL? Sergeant, Sloan wasn't entirely there to begin with. Now he has the rockets and... God knows what he's planning. Not only was Sloan trying to use the dragon's blood, but also control them and use them as weapons themselves. And this is why Darling decides to send us in and take out one of Sloan's hives, which is basically a scene straight out of one of the alien movies. And I must say, the flamethrower, perfect touch. Naturally, taking out more than a handful of blood dragon eggs might piss a few people off. This leads to a harrowing elevator escape scene with special thanks to your friendly neighborhood chain gun. In cheesy 80s movie fashion, we barely make it out with our lives. And we learn some critical intel. Doc, you said something about bioweapons? We were trying to beat the Russians. We'd hoped the dragon blood could bolster our fighting forces. Then we discovered its effects on normal people. It turned them into savages. Let me guess. You tried to tell Sloan not to use it. That's when he requested more rockets like the Red Spear. 
He's been arming them. Against the Reds? Against everyone, Rex. I think he's targeting the world, and Dr. Carlisle is helping him. I'll stop him and put an end to his operation, Doc. Nobody threatens my place. Turns out that Dr. Carlisle, Darling's former counterpart, is the one behind the hive and all of the tech used to control the Blood Dragon. So naturally, we need to go infiltrate his hideout and take him out. Although it seems that Carlisle knew all too well that we were coming for him and actually just sets us up for a trap. He locks us in with his bioengineered blood dragons and forces us to fight for our lives. Meanwhile, Darling is trying to hack into the AI and turn the AI against Carlisle himself. Unable to comply. This 8-bit piece of fucking hardware is obviously incapable of accommodating your superior needs. Please, don't kill me. Unable to comply. <laughs> Objective. Take the exit. And after managing to hold off the blood dragons, we're successful in eliminating Sloan's second hand man. Shifting our focus back to Sloan, I decided that I needed to prepare for what I expect to be a final fight for the ages. And naturally, I decided to go check out the other outposts, the other missions, and I got a little bit sidetracked, okay? Can you blame me? We even managed to unlock a sniper rifle with explosive rounds, which is exactly as satisfying as you may think. All geared up, we head off to face the intimidating, no turning back mission screen, before being transported to an entirely alternate dimension. And good news, those weapons that I just spent all that time grinding for are immediately replaced with round-based survival missions. I guess the only way that we can prove we can take out Salone is by doing some pseudo Call of Duty zombies action. After defeating waves of zombies, our hard work is rewarded with a grand reveal of our prize. And not just that, but also a wonderfully cheesy 80s training montage. But don't worry, if you thought the training montage was cheesy, the prize is called the Kill Star. It is a shuriken that attaches to your wrist that lets you shoot lasers. If you thought the explosive sniper was satisfying, oh, this takes it to a whole nother level. You literally melt enemies. And speaking of melting enemies, it's time for us to go for slow. We single-handedly assault his compound and commandeer his very own blood dragon battle droids. It's like cybernetic power rangers. And titanium drama plates. I think I'll take you out for a spin. And I shoot lasers out of my fucking eyes. All of his troops and armament stand no chance, and soon enough we finally get to face him one on one. It seems that the Kill Star lives up to its name as we single-handedly take down Sloane and save Dr. Elizabeth Darling. We get our final Michael Bay approved ending and the credits roll. Honestly, going back to this game, I had no idea that I would enjoy it as much as I did. The game focused and excelled on just being fun, as ridiculous as it was, and it really just exceeded my expectations on so many levels. Every time that I said, oh, it would be really cool if this happened or that happened, it just did. The game was just senselessly fun like a, a bad action movie should be. And as silly as it is to say, it's pretty refreshing, you know, a game just focused on being fun. Yeah, it's far shorter than most of the other entries in the Far Cry series, and no, it's not anywhere near as in-depth with customization and all of that, but I dare say, going back, it's just as fun, if not more fun, because of that experience. If you've never played it, I'd highly recommend checking it out, and of the old entries in the series, I'd say this one should be on your to-playlist. And with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. 
If you like this style of content, please let me know down in the comments down below any recommendations you might have for other games I should be checking out. And here are some of the episodes that I have already done. Consider checking them out. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, this has been your host, The Lost Jetty, and I hope to catch you guys in the next episode.